Drum roll, please. Turkish film Chess presents Chess. 1919. Playing us in 1889 from a country that has a red background and a black, like, elephant-looking thing on the front. I think I know what country that is. I get it, I get it mixed up with another country, though. So, let's see. Okay, he's playing a small opening. This is fine. Okay, we're developing. Queen's Gambit declined. Catalan. I think this might still be the Rago... Is this still the Rago, though? No, the Rago's in knight. It's, it's the Queen's Gambit, and then I play knight c3, and then he plays bishop b4. Okay, so he's playing the closed Catalan. This is permissible. He's going to have a problem getting his light score to bishop out. We're just going to castle and be chill. Then we're going to watch him flinch on the king side. That'll tell us what we should do. Uh, my plan in general is to get my queen to c2. Oh, this is weird. So his plan is to take, and then when I attack it, play b4, I think. Um, I don't think I agree with that. I'll play queen c2 now. Um, maybe he still captures. I capture. Then b4 comes, and he's attacking my queen with the pawn. So he wins a tempo. Queen goes back, and then I play knight c3 with threatening e4. And my rook now can come to d1. This is important, so I can line up against the queen. Notice with the bishop on e7 and the pawn on c7, the queen does not have a lot of mobility. Uh, a a6 by him also seems to me to signal that the b pawn is going to move, which means my knight will become more powerful because my knight will be looking um, across that way. So he's kind of blocked the opening to his queen, and so I'm deciding if rook d1 is the best or if it's better to play knight c3. Knight c3 hinders my defense of the center pawn. I'm deciding between rook. The two moves I'm deciding between are rook d1 and knight d2. Knight, knight bd2. I want to maybe also consider bishop f4, because then I can capture the pawn. He takes the knight. I think we're going to rook d1 first. Rook d1 first, I think, is good. Getting everything developed. Okay, takes, takes, this is fine. And we go back. Now, I think that a move like bishop f4 is warranted, because notice that we're looking at the, the c7 pawn, right? And then his knight goes to the middle, so maybe we play e4 first. e4, stopping his knight from going to d4. Then we play bishop f4, attacking that pawn. And if he wants to play bishop d6, I think I'm okay with that, just because it's going to cost him an extra tempo. Taking that takes with a pawn, the knight is destabilized, so perhaps we can make some play that way. Otherwise, my knight needs to go to e5 at some point. Um, okay, he hops in right away. I don't see why e4 is a bad idea here. e4, his knight goes to b4. Uh, I step forward and attack the knight. Oh, e4, b... Yeah, I see the problem. e4, knight b4. Uh, my queen can no longer defend the e4 pawn. That's the idea. So he played... Hmm. We want to get our queen side rolling anyway. That's why our bishop is on g2. So I don't totally disagree with this idea here of playing e4 now in this position. a3 seems like a concession. We're stopping his knight from going to b4, so he could play e4. Um, I don't think it's totally bad, though, because we're, we're hindering his bishop, we're hindering his knight, we're also pushing our queen side, which is what our bishop's there for. Uh, now, I, I think I think b, b4 is a bit much. Um, b4 is, I think, a bit unnecessary. Now the question is, can we play knight a4? Or, sorry, bishop a4? Then we can just play b3, I think, and we're, we're fine. So we should probably move our bishop out. Now the question is, after bishop f4... Oh, it's a fork, I see. Bishop f4, attacking the pawn twice. So the pawn is attacked. Again. Very good. And see, so we're making him make moves that maybe he doesn't, he doesn't really want to make. This is good. Now if I can get another... If I can get another piece to attack that pawn, I'll be very happy. Uh, the issue with knight... What's the issue with knight c3? Knight c3 releases the attack on this pawn. And actually, i got to worry about him playing c5, right? If he plays c5, that's pretty strong. Hmm. Maybe he'll play c5. He's very cramped. I don't want to trade pieces. Hmm. I think knight bd2 is good. I feel like perhaps bishop e7. Or sorry, sorry knight e5 is definitely good. Just attacking the, uh, the bishop. I know that's trading a piece, but it makes my bishop really good. Hmm. Right now, the b the b seven pawn is hanging, right? So if I can move my pawn and move my knight, I'm in a good shape. So I think knight e five is the play. 
Knight e5. We'll take the bishop and then we'll push e5. And he does just he just puts a knight on d5. And then I'm then I'm kinda sad. Knight c3, I think, just fails to c5. Knight c3, c5. Mm. It's unfortunate. Let's put an on e5 first. There's a few moves this could... There's a few ideas this could provoke in him that I think are good. I think best is just c5. Just ignore me. Which is tough. But we're trying to play active chess. This also defends the pawn on e4 again. Yeah, that's just a strange move. I don't understand that at all. Okay, now we'll defend d4. So this does look like it's heading towards mass trades, which is upsetting, but what can you do? Uh, he can he can weaken his king if he wants to. Um, I wouldn't advise it. There's actually an issue with weakening the king like this, is that my knight can actually go to g6 in some positions, uh, especially if my queen ends up on b3. Remember how the knight can become destabilized because it's dependent on the c7 pawn, which he's willing to push? He pushes the c7 pawn, um, the knight becomes destabilized, my queen on b3 is targeting the king and the destabilized knight. Just something to look out for. Not that it's going to happen right now. I think c5 is, is his best move. Um, I think I take once, and then I probably take the bishop. It's just going to... I think it just is just... I didn't play it right. And yeah, I just... This doesn't feel so good. If I take that, maybe there's even bishop... Bishop a3 possibilities targeting the e6 pawn. Um, I just... I like that his king has... He, we can delight squares around his king, right? So I need to get I need to get into the, need to get into those somehow. And I know B three just seems kind of strange. Or sorry, B six. I I think probably a really good play is to play A four A five. A four A five. The, where does the knight go? It has to go backwards. And it has to go back to <laughs> A eight, which is a very bad square for the knight to be on. The knight does not want to be there. So if he doesn't play something testing here, A four is my move. Probably I could have played it in this position. I think I like this a little bit, this version a little bit better, because now when I push a4 is actually defended. So, one question I guess we could ask is something like: Is b4 warranted here? See b4 back in this position. Um, I was worried about him playing c5, so b4 would have been a great way to stop that. The problem with b4 here is that he can put his bishop now on a4, and actually he wins an exchange there. Okay, he's going for this bishop. Uh, I don't think I totally agree with that decision. I think his knight was really good where it was. And now he's moving it away. So this is this is a little bit confusing to me. I want if my king gets open, that's fine. I'm not so worried about it. Uh I think we push b4 or do we push a4? I want to play b4 so I can stop c5 once and for all. I also want to play a4 to play a5. Tough decision. Tough decision. Tough, tough decision. Can we just push in the middle, actually? I think now's the time you just push in the middle. Just break the center. His bishop is attacked a lot. My bishop's going to become good here. Um, notice that there's nothing he can do. Um, the diagonal's going to open up a little bit for me. Either I take, which is bad for him. And actually, I don't think I take right away. I think I take the bishop first and then take. Um, the point being that if I just take, he can take with the bishop, and my knight and pawn are still a little bit stuck. I want I want all the center pawns gone, so my bishops can really shine. Now, obviously, he's going to take my bishop on f4. This much is clear. Got to watch out. That knight, that knight is undefended. Yeah, see, this is strange. This is strange. I think I just take and take. I don't, I don't quite understand this. Takes, takes, and now he's just, he's very weak, I think. Yeah, just very weak. There might even be forks here. Got to watch out for those. Yeah, so his pawn structure is bad. That's good for me. To just save my structure, I could just put my bishop back. On. Um, I could just put my just move my bishop backwards, and then I'm attacking the pawn after I push my center, or I can play a more active move, knight backwards to e2. Knight e2 defends the bishop and also releases an attack on the c7 pawn. So I kind of like that. The issue I think there is just bishop e6. Notice that my rook is attacking his knight. 
So his bishop is on double duty right now. So if I could somehow swap my rook and my knight, let's say I could put my let's say I put my queen where my rook is and put my rook one square up. That's actually a fork, like a real one. So I'm attacking the knight and the bishop. I'm just gonna be a little bit cowardly and go backwards here. I'm giving up the e5 square, I understand, except for that I have f4. So f4 I think is redeeming quality here. Uh, knight hops into d5, e4, his knight goes to c4, right, attacking, that's pretty good. Uh, and then I can just move my bishop either all the way back, or I can even move it forward, I think. Obviously, I prefer to move it forward. Uh, and then I'm attacking a lot of stuff at once. Yeah, then I'm attacking a lot of stuff at once. Also, I can't, I can't neglect this queen e2 move. This queen e2 move is pretty strong, I think. Getting closer to the queen, defending the e4 pawn, stopping... Oh, this is strange. Um... Hmm. I'm contemplating e5. e5 with the threat of bishop... Bishop b2 wins the pawn back. Um, also, I can probably sack... I'm gonna play this move. I think queen e2 is a really good move. I think this move is very good. So we're gonna play this move. Here. Defends our bishop again. Stops the knight from hopping in after it goes to d4. Uh, yeah. And here I'm actually threatening to play rook captures knight. Rook captures knight. Queen captures rook. Queen captures knight. So I actually get two knights for the rook. And then I have two amazing bishops. Yeah, he didn't see it. So I take here. And he can't even do... He wants to do the intermesso. Oh, he can. I thought he couldn't take knight captures g3 because I take, on, I take the bishop. The problem is after I take the bishop, he takes my queen. I move, then he takes my rook. Then I have to take back. Let's see. So what am I up right now? I'm up a, I'm up a knight. He takes my pawn. Yeah, this is what I saw. And then I thought I take his, his bishop. So I'm up one. Oh, I don't get the queen. He takes my knight. I move. He takes my queen. Sorry, I move. And then he takes my queen. So he's getting an extra pawn for it. I'm happy for him, honestly. Take with the A pawn or the F pawn? I think we'll take this way. We'll take this way. We'll be spicy. We will be spicy. Okay, gotta bring those pieces to the middle of the board. It's necessary. And I have uh, Queen G4. Queen G4 just threatening the A6 pawn. This seems pretty solid, pretty sound. So I think we play it now. This is also a fork, I guess, technically, because we're attacking the the deep pawn as well. Uh, yeah, that's pretty smart. I like that a lot. He's, he's counterattacking my pawn, so I can't take his yet. We can't play f4. We can play f3. f is a little bit scary. <laughs> so do we attack the exchange again? Sack another exchange? What? No. That's a bit too much, I think. Uh, let's attack his pawn some more. So I really want to win that pawn. If he pushes the pawn forward, that's problematic because it leaves the d5 square for my knight. We're getting low on time, but I'm actually I'm not I'm not so low on time here. I think I have a lot of attack against this king, and his his only counterplay comes from attacking my my c2 my f2 pawn. But guess what? I have a, I have a plan for that. I have, I have a way to get rid of the pressure. I can actually just play rook d7, rook d7, because now I can take the bishop. Then when he takes back, there's no more pressure, and I can do whatever I want. So, also, this is just a strong threat in itself. Um, he has to counterattack something, right? This is only play here. Oh, maybe he has bishop. Oh, I thought for a second he had bishop g5. The problem is I had to take the pawn, and his queen's pinned, so there's still no pressure. Actually, that's really deadly. Yeah, this is, this is bad for him. I have to say, this is very bad for him. I think he just missed, I think he just missed bishop a3. Okay, we'll take our pawn. And he can't take here, he can't, he can't trade the queens, he's just, he can't afford it. Oh, wow. What? F4 coming? I'm confused. This just seems really, really, really good for me. And really not so good for him. Wow, and he's trading down. This is not, this is not the way to go. Not the way to go. Notice the whole d-file's covered. Um, so I can play moves like this. And then I'll just walk my king over to e2 to cover the final square remaining. Because um, he'll probably play something like, yep, he'll play this way. 
He's trying to get in and attack my pieces. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's right. He thought I would take back, and then he wins the knight. The problem is I just kick the rook out, so the rook will have no attack on the knight. Oh, this is smart. I didn't see that. Hmm. I can't just defend it. Why can't I just defend it? The bishop's out of squares. Oh, the bishop can take the pawn. Okay. This is getting a little bit a little bit interesting. We gotta be careful. That could have been a mistake that I just made just there. We'll have to see. Um Well. We gotta find targets. I'm gonna target this pawn here. We have one pawn versus three on the queen side. We have three versus two on the king side. His king is very bad, my king is better. Whoa! I did not see that. That's a huge blunder. Yeah, I, I think I'm losing now. I could have taken the pawn. What did I do? What am I doing? Now we can defend the pawn. Wait, this is weird. I don't think that's right. Okay, maybe I'm blundering again. I guess we'll see. He can't check me because I just put my bishop in front. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is right. And now I have a sick move. Knight E this way. Check it out. Like this. Oh, that, that's actually bad. It works when his king is one square over, but now it doesn't work because his knight just goes his rook just goes back one square. And my knight is of the trapped knight variety, which is actually an interesting variety of knights. Gotta watch out for that kind. Uh we'll go forward like this. Attacking him. And I think he wants to defend it with his king. That's problematic though. Okay, he doesn't. That's smart. Good job not doing that move. It's a bad move, so. Okay, gotta bring the knight back. And how do we win? I just don't I just don't know how we win. Uh let's go backwards, I guess. Like this. Attack the knight. If you attack me, there's a chance you can take it, so. We're defending our our G our G pawns fairly unattackable at the moment. This seems good to me. Okay, he's gonna go for the G pawn. So let's push the G pawn to keep it safe. Just gotta wait for the opportune moment. Oh, wait a second. We had we had a plan there. We had a, we had a, we had a discovered attack on the on the kangaroo. Uh, here. If I can trade everything, I think I'm okay. I could be wrong, but I think I'm okay. He's running out of time. Oh my goodness gracious! And of course, I blunder. Running out of time. I think this loses too. I can't take it with the knight. Here. Hmm. Yeah, winning king and pawn endgame. Good for him. Gotta get in front of the pawn. Opposition. And it's over. All right, well, GG. I think we played a fairly strategic game. Honestly, like, I, I was not... I was not at all disappointed with how I did that. Um, I made tactical errors. Which is unfortunate. But I feel like my strategy wasn't totally... Totally ridiculous. He's 18 seconds. Let's see if he chokes it. Tell me. Oh, dang it. I have a feeling he's not going to tell me. me. King move. Let's go, stalemate. <laughs> he's so mad. No, he's not mad. I'm mad on his behalf. So, for chess people that are watching that are new to chess, this is a stalemate. Game drawn. 
this position, if you see it, he has an extra queen. So you're like, wait, isn't he winning? White has no legal moves in this position. But the important detail, I'm not in check. So my king is just like, I refuse to make a move. I can't make a move. So it's my turn for the rest of forever. And that means the game's not over, right? Wow. The only terminal state in chess, like like winning-wise, I mean, is if somebody's checkmated, right? Otherwise, it's just a draw. This is just a draw. That's crazy. I definitely should have lost that. Okay, but was I strategically... Was I doing the right things? I think I was. This is fine. A3 not recommended. This is E4. And I thought this. And I can play queen E2. I didn't see that. Queen E2 defends E4. And I can play A3 soon. Unfortunate. Okay, A3 is too slow. He made another nonsense. Just another waiting move. Knight B6 is good. Bishop before was strong. And then here, it's actually a fork. So he can't play that. So Rook C8. And I felt happy here. I was like, hey, I'm doing stuff. Oh, 95. Look at me. 95, best move. Knight C3, 95. Knight C3, C5, right? D, C5. Let's see, Bishop, C5. And now, 95. But what am I getting here? Let's see, it plays nothing. I play B4. His bishop goes back home. I play Queen, B3. And I just don't get what's happening. Okay, let's say he saves his king. I can play A4, and then A5. I see. So we're pushing the knight back. Gotcha. I just didn't, I didn't like that he could release himself with C5. But 95, good move. Okay, what if we played C5 here? That's what I thought he should play. C5. Now we play knight C3? Knight C3. He takes, we take. And what's undefended? My queen. My queen's undefended. So you should probably try to move my knight somehow. Okay, he plays queen E8. Getting off of the, getting off the diagonal. Also threatening to play bishop in... See, queen d1. I can't just develop my pieces more. Bishop b5. Okay. So queen d1. Attacking the knight, or the bishop, again. It's pretty good. Uh, and why doesn't queen b3 work here? Because bishop c5? Oh, defending and attacking. Smart. Anyway. Okay, queen d1 and h6. So you should play h6 eventually, and then h4. We're going for stuff. All right. That's not how the game went. The game instead went uh, knight c3, which was, which was fine. Knight c3 is good. Okay, and bishop e3. I'm supposed to drop it back. That bishop is actually really valuable. I was kind of... Oh, knight d7. Knight d7, queen d7, now knight back. Now bishop. Bishop back, sorry. Saving the bishop pair and threatening to push in the middle. Right. Takes, I take his knight, he takes back. I take with the knight in the middle. My pawn struck. Oh, I can't take with the knight. I can take with the rook, though. Take with the rook. I'll show you. So he plays a nonsense move. E5. That's D5. Hmm. Takes, 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 takes. That's, this is what the computer wanted. Queen G4. What? I'm winning here. I'm confused why the computer wants this. Anyway, it says instead E5 in this position. Oh, it looks like a bishop out. I'm attacking the c2 pawn. So he blocks it up. Expected. We come back this way. Oh, queen h5. And queen h5 still. Oh, h5. Other way. This way. Oops. Okay, this is brief analysis. Um, okay, I push in the middle instead. Knight captures f4, he should do. I wasn't worried about it. Here, bishop e3. Captures, 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 captures. I was really happy here. And then bishop e3. So I, I didn't play this awfully. Like, you can tell it's I'm 1.6 here. Either position was like plus 2, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with this. My bishops are great. His knight is on the side of the board. Okay, and then queen e2. Queen e2 is actually a fork right away. I'm forking the, the a3, the, sorry, the a6 and the h5 squares. So I want a pawn. He saved the pawn. Rook d7, queen d7. Oh yeah, what does this go? Here. We go queen d queen d1. We just defend the rook. Now the knight has to move. And now we can take this way. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, look at that. He's just so frozen. 
And I was like, hey, I can do this, but you can't because he takes here, takes here, and then he doesn't lose his queen. Dude. I saw this tactic too. I was like, hey, he can take the pawn. But guess what you do? You ice him out. You say, no more attack for you. I still have my rook. Your knight's attacked. You can't move your knight anywhere except for back this way. And when you do so, I can play the same trick again. Takes, takes, and takes. And notice, we both have a queen. We both have a rook. I have three pieces. Three pieces for the rook. Wow. And the two of them are bishops. That's incredible. So takes, takes. Takes was bad here. I lost a whole piece that I could have had. I could have had the bishop as well, but I didn't. And I'm fine with this move. Queen e8. Queen g4 was great. Queen f7 is a good counterattack. And e5 we're supposed to play. I don't understand e5. I do get this. This is bad. Because queen f2. Here. Queen f6. This is not good for me. My king's unnecessarily exposed. Anyway. Brief analysis. Uh, was bishop a3 good? Bishop h3? Yeah. Bishop h3 was solid. Can you take that pawn? Take it, take it. And I'm just super winning here. Like, super duper winning. Rook d8, rook d8. Okay, f4 is okay. Rook d3, come in. Bishop a3. Yeah, and I didn't see rook d6. Take, take. And I'm still winning, but notice in this position back here, I'm winning plus three. After this, I'm winning, like, plus two. So I'm still winning, but just not, not all the way. Rook e4, just blunder. Look at that, I just gave away all my advantage. Just go e5. e5. I didn't like this because it seems like I'm giving away. I don't have an outpost anymore. That was what I was worried about. I thought you go here. Oops. How do you go here? I can just go in the middle. There we go. This is what I wanted. And then my knight can maneuver wherever it needs to go. All right. This has been Chess with Turkish Films. Uh, if you were wondering where my opponent's from, my guess is Bangladesh? Ugh, Albania. Terrible. So he's Albanian. That's pretty cool. And he knows how to stalemate, which is also cool. Uh, stay Turkish.